Hey everyone, welcome back. So we haven't been doing a lot of these uh, example videos with DPG lately. After 1.0, we have a stable API. 1.2 is mostly going to be bug fixes. So we will start doing a few of these every now and then, putting them out there. Today we're going to be talking about how to use textures in DPG, how to show, um, we'll probably do a static dynamic and then a raw texture, and then we'll use OpenCV uh, to interact with this camera, grab the image or texture data from OpenCV, and then pass it to DPG so we can show, we can actually display a camera onto DPG utilizing OpenCV's uh, library as well. So we're going to use um, a NumPy to do a little bit of the, the convergence. We have um, NumPy uses BGR, but we, as a default, and uh, after this, did this example, I realized you can actually switch the camera in, in NumPy to be RGB. So I, I used NumPy uh, to do some of the, the conversions to use SIMD. Um, so that's just how this example went. We might go over how to switch it later at the end of this video. All right, let's get started. So I'm not going to be able to use the camera because we're using OpenCV to actually access the camera, and I only have one camera right now. Um, yep, so let's just check, make sure we have everything pip installed. I did pip install Deer by GUI and OpenCV, and let's go check in the site packages. This is uh, Python site packages under lib, and we can see that Numpy's here, OpenCV's here, and Deer by GUI is here. I got a lot of stuff in that folder. All right, so we're going to um, import... That's what we like to do. Um, and let's use the documentation from Deer by GUI. Um, let's go to the textures and images, and let's learn, let's figure out how to display an image. Let's, let's go over how to display an image in DPG. So there's static, dynamic, and raw. And static is really when you're showing a single image, and dynamic is when you plan on updating that image a lot. So like a video, like uh, active rendering, um, things like that, and, and then raw. And the difference between dynamic and raw, raw is is dynamic except uh, it doesn't have the, the type checking. So dynamic, we, we handle some uh, conversions, we handle some conversions from instant floats and things like that, and uh, raw, raw straight up, uh, passing it to the GPU um, using DirectX currently. So if you don't, you gotta be type safe here uh, yourself. And that's what we're gonna use because it's actually a little bit quicker. So, how to display a texture? Well, the first thing you have to do is create uh, DPG's normal uh, windows, context textures, uh, context, and stuff like that. And then we're gonna um, create a texture registry, and then add a uh, create a texture registry, and then add a, a a texture to that texture registry. When you add it, you add it with a tag. That tag is how you're then gonna access the texture later. And so, in a DPG window you'll do dpg add image and then pass in the tag of that texture. And so you can see that right here just with static textures, real simple, um, that example here. And let's check out the dynamic ones. So, or raw, let's go to raw. So, um, oh yeah, so raw also accepts uh, numpy arrays, which is awesome. Um, that's not something we like advertise like it is in there, it only accepts numpy arrays. And so that's good because it just swaps the pointer, it's super fast. Uh, all it does is uh, swaps the pointer uh, Python. Um, so we create our texture data here. Um, we're just looping through and, and appending some, some textures. So um, R, uh, G, 0, B would be this, and then alpha. And uh, we're doing this because uh, DPG takes in floats. It's uh, 255 over 255. So if we wanted like, like uh, DPG takes in a float arrays. And so you see we'll create an array of floats here. And then we create our texture registry, and then we add our raw texture. We add our raw texture. And let's just go do this real fast on um, the actual, uh, let's just grab some of the code. So we don't have to copy the import. Let's grab create context. So in DPG, we create context uh, and close it. So that way you can do this multiple times in a single, um, a single Python operation. You can actually open and close DPG and open and close DPG. And so creating context will need to close it later. And uh, let's just do the other stuff required first. Uh, let's uh, create a viewport. Uh, let's show the viewport. Uh, let's, let's show the viewport later. And then uh, uh, we'll set up here by GUI.
And let's make our texture registry. I mean, let's make our texture data. So you were just going to make our texture data, loop through, make it. Uh, let's take that texture data and put it in an array now. So we'll just do array dot array. We'll put that texture data in a um, a float. Let's see. Say good. Yep, float. A uh, float. Let's so float array. Array of floats. All right, and then let's take that texture, the raw data, and let's put it in a. Uh, here, let's actually start writing this code now. With uh, texture registry. And let's display this texture register. So with all of our built-in um, tools, we can show them. And it gives us a little like reddish, like a kind of a resource inspector kind of deal. And so there's a couple things inside of DPG. Let's go over that real fast. There's a couple things inside of DPG that we can do that with. And let's go, you'll see that we show this under tips and more resources. We have lots of them. We have an item registry, a font manager, and DPG so metrics show about. Debugging is a great one to use. Style editor, great one to use. And then documentation. Um, the item registry is a great one to use too. Um, and so with these, you can just show them. Uh, or when you create uh, things like uh, the texture registries, since you can have more than one registry, when you create things like that, you can you can show them to inspect the resources instead of uh, uh, passing in the the show participant. So let's show it. Let's add our add uh, DPG uh, raw add raw texture. And the first argument is a width. What is our width? Uh, let's find out. And this is just the example code I'm running. So let's just go to the example class. Uh, 100 by 100. Oh, yeah, look. We're looping through 100 by 100. All right, so 100, 100, and then what's the next argument? Uh, okay, so the value. So we're going to do pass in the value that we're going to do a format and a texture. So the value, um, raw data, that's our actual buffer. And then we're going to set the format to be dpg.mb format RGB A. Um, tag equals texture. Uh, let's do texture tag instead. All right. And so let's show this texture on something. Let's use this texture on an image item or a button or anything like that. You can use that with. So let's do a window, dpg window. Let's make our dpg window. Let's uh, just give it a name. Uh, um, there we go. Just so we can see that we a window with our name. So we know which one we're talking about. This is image store right here. Um, that's that's not all we need. Um, and let's add something to that window. Let's add. And let's pass in texture tag. That's good. Great. You didn't have to use tags here. You could just pass back the argument. Let's actually do that. Um, let's use tags for now. Oh, I didn't uh, finish setting up DPG. Okay. So we will. We already created the viewport. What else do we have to do? Let's look. Just to show you where to get this information, what else do I have to do? Let's go to uh, setup, show, start, distro context. Let's just grab all this. Setup, show, start. We're already doing setup up top, right there. Great. So uh, I'm ready to. Let's see. I think I have to render. Oh, that's it. 
there's our texture, there's our raw texture. And this is our texture registry that we were talking about. So we can actually select it. If I gave it a label, it would show up there with a label. But right now it's just empty. So we can see it's there. Uh, we can see our width and height. A little bit of information about your texture. Um, so if we added two textures, same data, two textures. Uh, texture tag two. Let's give them labels so we can see them better. Let's just do one and two. go. There's both of our textures. See how we can make as many of these uh, textures as we want. They'll see up in a texture registry and we can choose to either show or not show that texture registry. Um, so then again, here's our image sitting over there. All right, now we know how to make a raw image. Let's uh, let's figure out how to open CV um, and access our, our camera. Um, <clears throat> and I have a lot of that code set up, so we're just going to kind of copy it and go over it since I'm not exactly an open CV expert. Uh, just know how to use their base class. So the way I figured it out was I went over to their um, documentation and <clears throat> I just went to their video capture class, which is their video capture API. Um, and you can see like there's these things you could do. You could get, grab, is it open, open it, you know, read it. And so we're going to want to make it and then read it. And reading it is going to give us uh, our next video frame. It's going to keep replying. So you want to read, if you read once, you get one. You read again, you get the next image. You read again, you get the next image. And so you want to do this repetitively, so we're going to actually do it inside of a loop, inside of DPG. Um, so let's go make, make it. instead of using the built-in DPG render loop right here uh, with start deep UI, we're going to go make our render loop. So let's grab that from DPG. Let's show you how well that's at. All right, so let's go to the documentation. Let's see the render loop right here. So we can see that the render loop here actually replaces start here by GUI. So we're going to grab this, and every frame we're going to call render frame, and that's going to it's going to do this code every frame. Um, so let's just straight up replace. All right. Let's just get rid of that, and so we can put any code inside of this render loop right here, this while loop. And it's going to run that while loop every frame, and then it's going to render DPG. So you can do stuff before or after rendering DPG if you want. So let's do this before. And you'll see it will run every frame. Yep, this will run every frame. We're printing every frame. All right. So let's clear out this part. Um, let's clear out most of this, actually. And then let's just, let's just focus on it. So let's import OpenCV, because um, I already did install it, remember. Um, and so let's go see real fast what to do again with that. OK, so we're going to use video capture. It's going to open a file or image sequence. So you can do this from a file. You can do it from a camera, video capture. You can do it from a device, an IP, a video, basically anything. I think they've hooked it up for. Great. So we're going to use this. This is going to return. Here's their little Python documentation on it. It's going to return <coughs> the API uh, preview. So we'll be able to just interact with our camera. So this is going to return the camera. So we'll just be able to interact with the camera as much as you want. And so what we're going to do is when we get that camera, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to inspect it. We're going to play with it, right? And so we're going to use gets to get some information from their, their, from their API. So let's, let's, go to, let's go to get. And uh, get, we can pass in arguments and then get things back. So we'll be able to get things like... Uh, Let's go to their video properties, camera capture properties. We'll be able to get things like width, height, and those are things we need to create our image. Remember width and height. And then we'll just check out our frame rate uh, to because we're going to go over some stuff with that. We can also set any of this stuff. So um, using their um, sets, I think, I think they have a set. It would make sense. Set or, or, or like, yep, yeah, set. So we can also set things. And one thing I noticed earlier when I was actually going over this again is... I did see they have like a format, something like a format. So I didn't realize that you can just tell OpenCV to give you RGB, which is so much easier than what I was doing. I was using NumPy to actually do the conversions from BGR to RGB. Um, but we don't have to do that. That's that's handled for us. Uh, Open OpenCV, you can just set it RGB so you're getting back and just pass it directly into DPG. 
but uh, since the default um, is in uh, BGR and OpenCV, that's their default, uh, we're gonna just continue with that example that I had written earlier. And then I might go over how to do the RGB after, but it might take, a, might take a little longer, so let's not talk about that yet. Uh, all right, so we're gonna do the video capture and we're gonna get the, the zero device. So right here, let's just, all right, so vid. And then we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna inspect it, we're gonna inspect it. Um, we're gonna read a single frame from it. So uh, that's, we said, remember it was video read. We're gonna read a single frame. And read returns, uh, what does read return? Oops, saw it right there, didn't I? Let's go back to the top. Read, read returns the image and then something else. Um, the every frame, read, read, we're gonna read every frame. But before we read every frame, let's just read one frame so we can inspect a little bit what's coming back so we can kind of figure out what, what they're giving us. So they wanted us to use our git. So I'm just gonna grab some code. They wanted us to use the git function to name the properties. So we're gonna use video git and we're gonna name the properties we want with height and FPS. Let's just print those out to the console just so we can see what's going on there. Um, and then uh, let's see if that works. So we know we can verify here that we're actually interfacing with our, our camera like we want to do. I only have one camera hooked up. I guess if you had more, I could uh, you could hook up multiple ones. What's going on? Oh, this, probably, let's see. Yeah, so we're actually opening it. You can see we're interfacing with it. Um, I deleted raw data, so let's actually take that out. Um, and let's just put pass here since we're not using this yet. Um, yep, so you can see that it successfully opened. It got the video, um, so it got one frame out of it. Great, and uh, it got the width and the height and the frame rate. Um, so let's actually look a little bit more about what it got. So it got uh, a frame. So let's let's dig into the frame, and I'm just gonna. This is gonna look crazy. I'm just copying these. So let's do print frame. Um, let's print the. What is frame? Let's just print frame and just see what it gives us back. So we know that's data. What kind of data? So print frame. Uh, let's let's say what type it is to uh, type. I think it's like type or something. Like, I think in Python you can just do that maybe. Ah, we're still printing every frame, so that just. All right, let's go back up to the top. So, okay, so we can see that it's returning our frame. 30 frames a second, it's returning a numpy uh, data array. Um, it's returning a numpy array, perfect. So we know what to do with numpy arrays. And we can see it's returning threes, so uh, we know that's, because it's default, we know this is B and G and R, so BGRs. And they're coming in an int, and if you remember earlier, we said we needed floats. We need uh, uh, normalized floats, in fact, to work with the GPU. So we're gonna have to divide every single one of these by 255, and we're gonna do a little flipping to get them in the right order we want to be able to show them. We're gonna flip them, because we, we, we pass in RGB um, and, 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 D, and Dear Pi GUI textures. So we're gonna have to do a little, 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 uh, little numpy. Yep, we're gonna have to do a little numpy here. Um, unless you wanna set the camera to be a certain, to give RGBs, which we'll do later. Uh, let's do a little more inspection of our of our frame. So we know what frame is, so let's do a little more inspection of it. So we'll see, we know it's a frame array. Let's let's see what the type is. Array is the type, it's the number of dimensions, the shape of the array, the size. Let's just learn about this array a little bit, this uh, data type, this text, this uh, numpy data uh, type. So uh, we'll, yep, you can see the frame type. It's just do frame.indin, frame shape. See, these are all things you can do with numpy arrays. And then, so this is where we're gonna start coming in and doing our, our operations because we're gonna have to flip it. We need RGB. So numpy can do numpy flip and it'll just give us our uh, BGR to RGB. And this is gonna be a SIMD uh, sped up formula, so it's gonna be really fast. And then uh, this is gonna flatten our, our camera data into a 1D structure because you can see right here, there is, this is a, a 2D probably, 3D, 
I don't know. 3D? So this is, this is, this is yep. Yeah. 3D. Um, 3D. Because it's uh, XY uh, with the height, and it, uh, that's how, the, and then, yep, so 3D. Um, and this is one pixel. So then it would be your rows and then columns and pixels, 3D. And we're going to flatten it using this function in, in, in NumPy. And I'm not going to go over NumPy, but you can go look up these functions. NumPy NumPy is a little bit easier to use than OpenCV. So let's keep moving forward. NumPy true divide. So we're going to actually get them. And I told you we had to get it. We had to make sure that the data type is uh, floats, 32-bit floats, because that's what we used in earlier. You saw that we were creating the image. We were doing it with floats. Floats. We take in floats for raw textures. See, if we were to pass it into a dynamic texture, this would handle the conversion for us. We want it to be fast, as fast as possible, at least. Um, the speed will be limited by OpenCV. Um, since our camera is only a 30 FPS camera, it's going to call, give me the frame, and then it's just going to wait until the camera is ready to give it the frame. So it's going to be paused every time it reads from the frame. Now I can, I can prove that in a second. So, yeah, let's just rerun this and let's see all of our new data on our array. And open CV takes a second, hot second. Interact with it. There it is. All right. So again, we can see the array is of type numpy array. It's uh, three dimensions, the shape, uh, 480. And there's our width and height again. We know it's our shape. And then it's a 3D array. We can see our total size is there. So that's the number of pixels or whatever, a number of uh, RGB. So it would be this times that times that, I think. Um, and from our camera, it's coming in as an unsigned integer. And uh, eight bytes, so we can see that that's how it's coming in. But we need it in floats again, so we're going to take it, flip it, divide, whatever. That's, that's our answer. And now let's inspect our answers. So here, here's where we're doing all of our conversions. Let's go check out those answers a little bit. So let's do this same stuff we're doing up here, but let's do it on our new texture, and let's make sure it's the. We're just going to do this to make sure it's the type we need. Perfect. So there's the last thing we saw. So this is our texture array. So our new array is a numpy array again, 1D. Perfect. It's got to be flat data. We take in, uh, the GPU takes in a single stream of uh, textures. Um, so we know it's flat. We can check the shape, size. Perfect, perfect. And it's float 32. So there we go. That's what we wanted. Um, And so this is zero to one, so we can make our texture now. All right, great. Um, so let's make our window again. Let's actually start creating it. Let's make our window. There it is. Uh, uh, let's open our uh, texture registry. So we're going to bring our texture registry back. True. And then you're going to be able to see, again, raw texture. And let's actually, instead of hard coding this stuff in, let's use our frame. Uh, should we be using texture data? Oh. So we're going to use, we're just going to, we could use texture. No, we're going to use our frame because this is what we got back from the camera. So this is the width and height. So really, let's just, we did it up here. So let's just grab this width. We can get it from the camera or we can get it from the data type. Here we're going to get it from the data type. So let's just get it from the camera. It's probably a better way to do it. That doesn't matter. So width, height. Uh, in our default value, and that's going to be texture data. Let's set our format. dpg.mb format RGB. Oh, something else. Tag. And 
and I keep that texture. Just so we can see it. Alright. And then we're about to be done with this. Let's just do our add image again. And then specify texture. And because we're not doing this inside of our render loop, it's just going to show us the first image it grabs. We'll put it down here too. We want to update it every frame. But let's just make sure we have a valid thing going on here. Yep, there we go. So that was running. Great picture of me, by the way. Oh, okay. Um, so there's some stuff we have to do. Uh, I skimmed over it, but we need to be calling this thing video release down here. OpenCV wants you to release the resources of the camera when you close it. And that's really only if you're going to be like, do, calling this multiple times with the same script. And also, they, uh, uh, let's see. Perfect. Let's do it every frame so we can get to a live video now. And all we have to do is update the texture every frame. So every frame, we're going to go grab our video read. We're going to do those conversions every frame. So let's grab those. Data, flip, all that. All that. And then... All we have to do is dpg.set, set, value, and we're going to set our textures value. And then we're going to set it with the new texture data. That's eh, probably not the best coding. There it is. All right. So we've got our video reading now. You can see there's our texture resource in the background. So we can kind of check out what's going on. Every frame is being updated. So that one should also be live. Yep. There we go. And uh, this is rendering at 30 frames a second. So when you dry it, you see like the wind is kind of choppy. Maybe not because we're taking a video. Um, uh, I got to be like terminating something wrong. Um, that's an open TV. Just ignore it for now. Um, yeah, so let's go into why it limited to six, 30 frames instead of uh, running DPG at its typical 60 frames. So let's comment this one thing out. Uh, one, I say one thing, all of this. Let's also do DPG dot show metrics. So when we do that, we're going to be able to see our frame rate and everything. There we go, we can see our frame rate. So our frame rate is uh, 30 frames a second. And why? Why is it staying at 30 when DPG normally runs at VSync, uh, whatever your VSync monitor, this monitor is 60? Well, it's because when you call this right here, this read, it's gonna pause and wait for the camera to present the, it's gonna pause and wait for the camera to give us the texture. And if that camera is only recording at 30 frames a second, it's gotta wait until the camera is done recording that, that frame. So if we comment this out right here, we should get our full 60. And what you can do, I'm not going to go into this example, is uh, take this off of the main render loop. So you don't want to do this inside of your render loop. You want to do this on another on another thread. And then just when the data is ready, then you do, when the data is ready on that other thread, then you'll probably do some like swap or something and like put it on your um, texture. So that way you're not slowing down DPG's speed. So let's just comment all this out real fast. And again, if you set it to be RGB, you don't have to do this numpy stuff. Just 
Oh, it went through. Didn't you? It didn't do anything. There you go. There it is. Yep, there goes 60 frames a second. And it goes higher, but it's a beast thing to hold it. All right, so that's about it. Um, is there anything else I'm going to cover? No. Nope. Great. All right, well, thanks for hanging out, and uh, I hope this example was useful. Uh, if you want me to keep doing more of these, let me know uh, in the comments or like the video. Like, Let me know if you want me to keep doing these examples. All right, thanks. Bye.